Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. And of course, everybody who's watching, if you enjoy this video or get something out of it, I would really appreciate it if you would click that thumbs up button. Um, what I'm gonna talk about in today's video is the wood that I have chosen for this six string multi-scale fan fret guitar build that I'm doing. And what I've decided to do is I'm going to be using wood from my stash rather than going out and buying new wood because I need to kind of clear out some of my stash. And there are a lot of boards in there that I think will make good guitars, but they do present some challenges because the boards they're not perfect. Oftentimes when I buy lumber for guitars, I'll buy them in huge lengthy boards and I'll cut them down to the sizes that I need. Usually, however, those boards will have flaws in them. And oftentimes those flaws are at one end or the other. Or maybe they might be in the center and I just have to figure out a way to work around it. But what ends up happening is I end up with a bunch of boards that have flaws in them because they're cutaways, they're cutoffs. And I need to find a way to use those boards so I can clear out my shop. And going through my stash this morning, I found a bunch of boards that I think are gonna work if I play my cards right. We'll just have to see. And usually I, th I find that if there's a flaw that shows up in the finished cut piece, as long as it isn't the neck or the fretboard, if it's just the body, I can find ways to deal with that. So, but hopefully I can uh, use these boards and not have to um, figure out ways to fix some of the flaws. But let me bring you in a little closer and I'm gonna show you the wood that I've chosen for this build. Okay, so what I've got here is a big thick slab of Eastern Rock Maple. Now this is the hard maple variety. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it has very straight grain running from one end to the other. Typically, when I choose wood for a guitar neck, I like to use quarter sawn wood, no matter what the species is. However, it can be difficult to source, uh, especially in thick slabs like this. Uh, sometimes my lumber supplier has it, sometimes they don't. And um, I had this piece of flat sawn maple, which I'm willing to use because even though it isn't as sturdy and stable as quarter sawn wood, uh, it still works pretty well because it is the uh, hard maple variety. And with this really straight grain, I should be okay. I shouldn't have any issues with it. And besides a lot of uh, Stratocasters, Telecasters, uh, in fact, a lot of the big uh, guitar companies that make guitars with maple necks use flat sawn because flat sawn maple is still incredibly strong and stable and, and stiff and resistant to bending and warping and all that. One thing I do, however, do is I make sure that when I select a piece that it is absolutely straight with no bowing, no warping, and no twisting. And I typically will look for wood that has a moisture content at or below 8%. And this wood is, this wood is probably around 5 to 6% moisture content. Uh, the lumber supplier that I deal with only sells wood that's completely dry. So I'm relatively confident that um, the wood that I buy from them is always going to be uh, pretty dry and, and I like to check it. I've got a couple of different moisture meters that I'll use to check the moisture content. The problem is, is moisture meters, they really don't give you an accurate uh, indication of what the moisture is, especially on really wide, thick boards. You get a pretty good idea of what it is close to the surface, but deep down inside, you just don't know. So I have to assume that the wood has been kiln dried and stored in a dry environment prior to it being sold, which my lumber supplier assures me that's what they do. 
So, um, and I've never had any issues with the wood warping, bending, or twisting that I buy from my local supplier, so uh, I'm not too concerned about it. But you'll notice with this board, I have a little bit of a flaw here. This is well outside of the, the actual final shape of the, the neck itself, so I should be okay. But this is one of the reasons why I haven't used this board is because it had that flaw in it and I just didn't want to bother with it. But I want to get rid of it now, so I'm gonna, gonna make it work. And the other thing is, the blank, as I prepared it in my CAD CAM software programs, is 30 inches in length and then five inches wide. But this board is actually, it's about four and five eighths inches wide. So it's not the full five inches. But that's okay because I go off at the center line. So it doesn't really matter if it's exactly five inches wide. I know some of you are probably thinking that with CNC technology, you need to make sure that your material is cut to exact dimensions. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way, especially if you work off the center line. If you position your home position for the spindle based on the center line, um, it, it, the width doesn't have to be exactly what you set it up to be in the CAD CAM program. So I'll be fine uh, with that. That shouldn't be an issue. Now, for the body itself, I've got a couple of big thick slabs of alder. And alder is, it's, it's a wood that, I like it because it's so light in weight. You know, it's almost swamp ash weight. But if you look at these boards, you can see there are a number of flaws in it. And alder can be that way. Alder can have a lot of knots, a lot of um, issues in it. And that can pose a problem using boards like this as a blank. So what I have to do is I have to look at how I have the body set up in my CAD program and figure out where these flaws are with respect to the blank and are they going to intrude into the actual shape of the body itself. And right now, based on uh, a quick check and some measurements, this flaw here is going to be outside of the body where it the contour curves in. Then this flaw up here is inside the cutaway. So it won't be, um, it won't intrude. Now there is some cracking and splitting here, but that shouldn't be an issue because I'm gonna put a top on this guitar. And then on this piece, I have a flaw up here, but it should be, in fact, I think once I prepare these and cut them to length, that whole section will be cut off. But then when you look at this side, <laughs> things get really ugly. I've got this sheared away section right here. I've got this big crack hole crushed flaw here and this problem up in here. But again, I think this is all going to be cut away. This should be on the, uh, once again, it should be on the inside of the, uh, where the um, contour of the body curves in towards the middle of the body. And then this edge here, that I think is going to be cut away when I cut this to width. So I, I think I'll be okay. Um, we'll see once we start cutting this on the CNC machine later. Now I've decided I want to put a top on this guitar. One of the problems with alder is it's pretty soft. You can dent it with your fingers and, or your fingernail. Um, it's typically about the same softness as Douglas fir or pine. It's considered a hardwood because um, it, um, it loses its leaves in the wintertime. Uh, your softer woods, like your pine and your Douglas fir, those have pine needles and they never lose their needles as the seasons change. So that's what differentiates a softwood from a hardwood. Um, now for the top, what I'm going to use is this piece of flame maple that I have. And this was sitting in my shop for a long period of time because it doesn't have, you know, 5A world-class figure. Um, although, if I wanted to, I could call it 5A because there's no, no law or rule that says I can't. However, I don't use that as a designation. I just say, yeah, it looks good or it doesn't. And this particular piece, it has some, you know, a little bit of flame in the middle of it. So I think it'll look okay. Uh, it's not going to be um, 
you know, that incredible 3D flame that you would see on a PRS guitar or anything like that, but I'm fine with that. That, that doesn't really matter. I, I'm not too concerned. Now for the fretboard, I have this piece of Paduke, and I think that this should work out pretty well. I have to measure to make sure that the dimensions are correct. Mainly I'm worried about the length of it. I want to make sure it's long enough for the fretboard that I'm going to make. But it is, I believe, thick enough. There is a little bit of a thin spot here, so I'll have to check that as well. And if this doesn't work out, I can always source another fretboard. Uh, I have a bunch of maple blanks that I could use as well. Uh, although I was kind of hoping to use... A, um, a darker wood for contrast. So I don't know, we'll see. But that's basically what I'm looking at for the wood for this build. Now what I have to do is start preparing the blanks. Okay guys, there's a change in plans. This piece of Paduke that I just showed you, it has a section where it's just too thin. Um, if I were to plane it all to the same thickness, I think it would be too thin in order to do this uh, conical, multi-scale fretboard, uh, conical radius. So I think instead of using this, I'm just gonna set this aside for something else, maybe a future guitar build. I have one in mind. Uh, I think what I'll do instead is I'm gonna use this really nice piece of flamed maple. And I'm just gonna cut it down to the correct width. And then I probably out of this, I can get three fretboards just out of this blank, so. I think that's what the plan is. So now I'm gonna start cutting. Okay guys, I've got all the cutting and planing work done for these blanks and the fretboard blank is ready to be clamped down to the CNC machine and carved into a finished fretboard. Uh, I also have the blank here for the neck and that edge that was kind of the, it looked like a live edge section up here. That's been pretty much cut and planed away completely. There's just a tiny little bit left and that'll play no uh, part in 
uh, interfering with the uh, neck that I'm going to cut out of this blank. So it's good to go as well. Now, as far as the body's concerned, what I have to do is I have to glue down the top to each half of the, the base of the body. Then what I need to do is run it through my planer to plane the top surface of the body of this uh, flamed maple so that it's nice and flat and smooth. Then I have to run the edges over the joiner and then I can glue the two halves together so that I'll have a, a blank that's ready to roll. So um, that's actually going to happen in the next episode. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, episode. I hope you got something out of it. Um, and if you're new to the channel, again, welcome. I hope I've earned your subscription. And to everyone else, um, please, if you enjoyed this video and watched it to this point, uh, click that thumbs up button. It, it really helps the channel. It's a great way to sh uh, show support for the work I'm doing without having to spend any money. And if you would like to help uh, support the channel financially so that I can continue building guitars and testing tools and that sort of thing, be sure to um, visit either eGuitar Plans or um, my Highline Guitars YouTube merch store. There's links in the description down below for both uh, places and you can purchase plans for building guitars and uh, the tools that we use to build guitars. In fact, once this series is done, I'm going to offer the plans and the uh, STL files for this guitar project on both the guitar plans and my Highline Guitars uh, YouTube merch store. So until the next episode, as always, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back to watch uh, this guitar as it comes together.